March Madness is a presentation of the Illinois High School Association. And they are out of contact. They can't get it to him. They get it to Wayne instead. He drives. He from the floor of Assembly Hall on the campus of the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana as the boys' Class AA basketball third place game is about to tip off between the Rocks of Rock Island and the Steelmen of Joliet. Hello again, everyone. Joe Passion back with you. Last week, the Class A tournament was a game of last-second winners. This week, it's been a game of last-second losses. These two teams, though, hope to make it up in this game. Let's first take a look at the map and find out where the two teams originate from. Rock Island, the visitors here are, of course, in the northwest portion of the state along the Mississippi River in the Quad Cities and Joliet, a far southwest suburb of the city of Chicago. Now, take a look at both towns. Well, let's travel down then via the country company's town footage for both Rock Island and Joliet. Located in northwestern Illinois on the banks of the Mississippi River, Rock Island is home to 47,000 Illinoisans. A blue-collar, hard-working community, new plans are being made, and new structures are going up. Rock Island is quite scenic and has many recreational outlets, and nowhere is March Madness more revered than by fans of the Rocks. The region of Joliet was first settled way back in 1818 and became a city in 1852. In its early days, Joliet was a large producer of steel using the Illinois Waterway for transportation. Today, Joliet is still a hard-working community. The downtown area has been revised as a banking and legal center, but the biggest change has been the merger of the two high schools, Joliet West and Joliet Central, two years ago. Together, they hope to bring home the first state basketball championship trophy since 1937. So the Rocks will try and dent the Steelmen here in this consolation game of the AA quarterfinals and on through this third place game. And we'll be back to present that for you right after this word from our network sponsor, Ford. March Madness is brought back live here at Assembly Hall. The Rocks against the Steelmen in the third place game. And to handle the play-by-play, -play, let's send it over here to my good buddy, Lee Hall. Lee? Thank you, Dash and Joe Passion. So long, and we'll talk to you in just a little bit. This close, this close, that's how close Joliet and Rock Island both came to being in the championship game. Kenny McReynolds, they have to put the disappointment of this afternoon behind them and, and come up with the gumption to play in this game tonight. I tell you, the morning session was outstanding. One team lost by one point, one team lost by two. The question, do they have anything left for that third place championship game? We'll see in a minute. Both teams had a chance to win at the buzzer. Josh Elston for Rock Island, the heartbreak kid in the second game against Harvey Thornton. He just missed a prayer from three-point range that would have won the game for Rock Island. He had 14 points, four three-pointers, and at the buzzer, his three-pointer rolled out. And boy, but I tell you what, Lee, he can stroke that three-pointer. Look at this on the left side there. That's an almost an NBA range, so we know Josh Elston will have to be watched very closely tonight. He led a great comeback attempt by Rock Island there in the third quarter. In game one, it was Gary Bell and Joliet just falling short against Peoria Man. Yeah, well, Gary Bell had 16 points, 11 rebounds this morning against Manuel. He's a two-time All-Stater. Going to Notre Dame, you will have to contain Gary Bell. Look at the nice spin move. He gets the baseline, the nice scoop layup. He's left-handed. You want to push him to the right, but Gary Bell, you're going to have to stop him tonight. It's the battle for bragging rights on I-80. Joliet and Rock Island coming up next in the third place game. We will be back at the Assembly Hall after these local messages. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming who 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for tonight's third place game, featuring the Rocks of Rock Island High School, winner of this game with a record of 27 and six, and the Steelman of Joliet Township High School, who come into this game with a record of 29 and three. At forward for Rock Island, the 6'5 junior, number 32, Michael. At forward for Joliet, a 6'5 senior, number 40, Gary Bell. At the other forward for the Rocks, a 6'5 senior, 23, Monte Jenkins. And at the other forward for the Steelman, a 6'0 senior, number 10, Joel House. At center for Rock Island, the 6'7'' senior, 33, Josh Elston. And at center for Joliet, a 6'3'' senior, 32, Oku Satcher. At one of the guards for Rock Island, 6'1'' and a senior, number 20, Brad Wilson. At guard for Joliet, a six-foot senior, number 11, Rory O'Connell. At the other guard for Rock Island, a 5'8 senior, number 14, Kaman DC. And at the other guard for Joliet, a 5'11 senior, 23, Michael Mines. And introducing the head coaches, from Rock Island in his 15th season at Rock Island, Duncan Reed. And for Joliet in his 14th season, Mike O'Connell. Your officials for this third place game. All right, we'll see what both teams have left for Rock Island in the starting lineup. It's Jenkins and Michael at forward, Elston at center. V.C. and Wilson at the guards for the Steelmen, number three in the state, Bell and House, Satcher at center, O'Connell and Mines. And let's take a look at the team comparisons brought to us by American Eagle and American Airlines Cargo. Pretty even. Pretty matched. even. Yeah. Uh, Joliet gets the advantage in field goal, Rock Island three-pointer, the free throw, rebounding Joliet. That, of course, is due to Gary Bell. Size and quickness, we split right down the middle. Gary Bell and Monte Jenkins are out A little excitement here on press row. <laughs> Yours truly dumped his soda pop all over the place, so we're kind of... Well, thank goodness for you, you missed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Would have rolled right off of those, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sporting the leather tonight. And here comes Monte Jenkins with a steal right off the bat. Elston 
Well, Elston well he made that one. Picks up where he left off this afternoon. Elston's jumper gives Rock Island a 2 0 lead. Duncan Reed has finished fourth twice down here at State. His best finishes, so a third place trophy would be an improvement for the Rocks. There's the longtime coach. Rock Island, 15 years at Rock Island, eight years in Lincoln. Had a chance to talk to some of the Joliet players before the game tonight. They really lose, they're still happy to be here. And they want to send Coach O'Connell out if you have a travel out with the uh, trophy. And Mike O'Connell, before the game, I was talking to him, and he's happy to be here. Of course, he wanted to be in the championship game. He came up a bucket short, but he told me, hey, a third place trophy would be a great thing to take back to Joliet. Well, it's it's got to be disappointing, and when you're Younger, those things are tougher to get over, I would think. But doggone it, it's a game, and you got to come back and play right away. It's disappointing. It's a t it's a tough test, I think. The third place game is a tough test for all teams. As we take a look at the team notes there. See, the third place game is where your pride comes into play. And if you have pride, you come out and you want to play no matter if it's the third place, fourth place, eighth place. You want to win. That's why they keep score. So you, the object of the game is to score more points, and your pride has to come into play. With Elston again, a long two. He almost had a three. Well, there's another bucket for Josh Elston. He has all four of Rock Island's points. Perfect from the field. Two for two. And a quick timeout by the Steel. Timeout. 4-2 our score. 626 to go first quarter. One of your network sponsors is Country Company. And game notes for the Steelmen of Joliet Township, their second consolation game appearance. They finished third back in 1970. And of course, it's the last game for Mike O'Connell. Our officials tonight, Tom Abramowitz and Mark Newquist. Rocks out to a 4-0 lead in this third place game. Coming up after this, it's Harvey Thornton against Peoria Manuel for the state title. Elston misses his first shot of the game. Michael wisely kicks it out front to Taman Vesey. Hey, Vesey really loves to put that ball between his legs and just whirl like he's making a figure eight. Ahead to Gary Bell. Two-time All-Stater cannot get the roll. Made it up too soft. Have to be aggressive. Have to slam him. Be strong. The ball won't break. Monte Jenkins for three. House had a nice ball game this afternoon. He's fouled by VC. Joel House had 16 points against Manuel. Well, what I like about House that play, Lee, was that see, he saw no one was about to stop him. So there was nobody in his way, so he just uh, went coast to coast. If nobody first steps in and tries to stop the penetration, why stop? Just keep going. And that's exactly what he did. He did that this afternoon. Remember, he had the fast break bucket right. down here at the other end? And nobody gets in your way. Nobody tries to stop the penetration. So you just go for the layup. As we look at Mike O'Connell in his last game as coach, I asked him who was taking over next year. He said they haven't posted it yet. So, all your high school coaches out there, you have a pretty good job available at Joliet. How about the job Michael Connell's done? 14 years as a head coach in the Joliet community, 237 and 144. And he said two years ago he wanted to, uh, to get out. Oh, man, his son's down, Andrew. Rory O'Connell, that's the trainer, looking at him. He didn't catch what happened. He hit the floor pretty hard, yeah, though. You really hear did. the thud. Kind of screen from our angle. The Joliet trainer looking 
over Rory O'Connell. Now he is your medical doctor. Rory's a six foot, 160 pound senior. And seven assists earlier today against Manuel. He is up to a sitting position, and that at least is a good sign. Well, thank goodness. You never want to see anybody get yeah, hurt. He's okay. Last game of his career. The senior and his father going out together. I'm sure Joe will have a report for us. Four one. Oh, nice move by House. House will have a chance to tie the game. Beautiful move by, by Hyde. Nice bounce pad. Now House on the right side. Now watch the body control. Little language. Ooh, Jenkins hits him right on top of the face, but Joel House with a three-point play to tie the game at four apiece. His mother must have never told him not to hit a guy with glass. <laughs> We're tied 4-4. Joel House with all four points for Joliet. Here's Taman VC. Kicks it back out. Corey Jenkins now into the ball game for Rock Island. And a foul will go against Gary Bell. Joliet foul on number 40, Gary Bell, his first. First on Bell. LT Boyd into the ball game now for the Rocks. Joliet. He replaces Wilson. Boyd is into the game, replacing Brad Wilson. Out of bounds, Rock Island. Nice give. Monte Rock Jenkins with the bucket on the nice Monte pass from Boyd. Three-point attempt by Michael Mines, who had the three-pointer that would have won the game against Manuel this afternoon. Jenkins again, two in a row. Two in a row for Jenkins. Well, it's nice to see that each team that come out playing hard despite really tough, close losses earlier today. Well, it, it's still early in the game, but I'm really impressed with the legs. I mean, they all seem to be getting up and down the floor all right. Nobody's any slower than they were earlier today. Well, I guess you have all, all year to rest. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm sure you don't have to practice tomorrow. Easier to bounce back when you're 18, too, or 17. Let's go to Joe Passion. All right, guys, uh, Julia trainer uh, Shane Howe, she tells us that Rory got hit in the throat. He's icing it. He's fine, though, but it's appropriate that his father's been suffering from a sore throat all week. And I think the O'Connell household, one way or the other, is going to be a quiet one later this week. <laughs> back to you two. Hey, Joe, uh, ask, what's her name, Jane? Ask Jane, will he be able to play uh, in the game? Will he be able to come back? Oh, he will. Okay. John Ford, number 42, is into the ball game now for Joliet. And you would hate a senior to be injured in his last game. That's good news that he will be able to come back. Inside. Oh, look at Monte Jenkins with the rejection. Here comes Pete Michael. Beautiful rejection. By Jenkins in the outlet to Michael, who goes up for the layup, but he's fouled by House. Joliet foul number 10, Joel House, his first team foul. Watch the block. This one is a shooting foul. Over and man, that is a clean block. And John Ford went up for the dunk, is blocked. Then they come back down, try to get the fast break on the layup, but Michael was fouled as he completes his first free throw. On take and get off the floor in a hurry. Pete Michael, the number one scorer in this IHSA tournament. They keep stats from the Sweet 16 on. He's averaging 19 points a game. 10 to 4. Joliet answers. Joel House has all six points.
get a weak side. There's defense. a good rejection at the other end. Well, Joliet ran the fast break well that time, but the shot that was taken by Dwayne Edmonds was well off the mark. They just couldn't complete it. Chip Bates had to block that last time down the travel. floor. And they got the freshman for a travel. Luke Woods. 33, Josh Elston, and number 43, Andy Melton, are into the Rock Island lineup. Number 11, Rory. Some more substituting, and we will probably see a lot of young men play tonight. Final back, that's always a nice sign. I'm sure the second half, a lot of players will play. And these young men have to get tired sooner or later. Andy Milton is also in there for Rock Island. Bell with a long three, looking forward with the rebound. John Ford's first bucket of the game. The first Steelman other than House to score. I may be wrong, but I think Milton got a haircut since this afternoon. Did he? I think he did. I'm almost sure of it. I think you're right. <laughs> Chip Bates lays it in. Where's, where's our fashion patrolman, Joe Passion? I think he's going to check. <laughs> Number 43, Andy Milton has uh, a little bit longer hair, if I'm not mistaken. And 14, Taman BC, back in the lineup. It's He's on going with the bird cut. Joliet. I think you're right. Very interesting. I'm sure somebody may have had a pair of clippers. I just think he's staying in our hotel, Kenny. That could have been going on while we were sleeping last night. <laughs> Or, yeah, or for this battle in between sessions. Yeah, I don't. I know he had the longer hair last night. I don't know about today. Now, watch this as they, Gary Bell tries to steal. Whoa. It's been a tough start for the Steelman. O'Connell got hit in the neck. We will have a haircut update from Joe Passion coming up. We're tied at 10. And how appropriate. What a great segue. What a great segue. The foul is on Andy Milton. Joe, let's hear about his hairdo. Well, Andy Milton has moved into the finals of the Dash and Joe Passion Statement on Fashion Club. His mom, this afternoon, between sessions, decided it was time he needed a haircut. And she gave him one back at the hotel. And it's a good thing you guys weren't roaming around there, although I don't think it could have helped Kenny at all. Oh, uh, hey. <laughs> Actually, I could use a little trim. I get my hair cut third Wednesday. I get my hair cut once a week, Joe. <laughs> Whether he needs it or not. Right, once a week. <laughs> so mom gave him a haircut. Let's All see if we can right. find mom. <laughs> I want to get I want to get the name of that report again. The Dashin Joe Passion Fashion report on fashion. Is that it? Oh, beautiful. Do we really? Great. We're going to see a before and after look. It's a third place game. We've got to keep ourselves entertained, right, Kenny? I like the after look. You know, if you look at my hair, I don't have much, so <laughs> I kind of. It's a similar look to yours. Yeah. So I gotta say, I like the after look. 45.9 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Joliet, Rock Island, tied. We can get around a little bit. There's been a bit of a scoring drought for both squads. Ford with it, way out top. He drives, puts it up, and he's fouled. I think once you put some weight on Ford, he's going to be a pretty good basketball player. All right, there he is now. There's the after. There, there see, yeah. Three, Josh Elston, well, I see. 
I see why she cut it. <laughs> because, you know, the little bang look on the top. Well, that's how I remember that he got a haircut. Yeah. Now, how's that for observation? Like, I think yeah. I should get some see observation the, points. See, see yeah. the bangs on the top. Yeah, yeah Mom, wherever you are, Mom. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Oh, having a little fun at Andy Milton's expense. Now, knowing Joe, he'll find Mom and get this story on, on the haircut. John Ford, the miss at the line. Rocks will get a last shot at it. As time winds down here in the first quarter, 17 seconds. I really like your point guard, DC. Really, a couple of well-coached teams, and look at the Rocks execute. Michael the dunk. Michael. House just missed the three. Mines follow wouldn't have counted had it gone. And it's a two-point Rock Island lead after eight minutes of play. We will return after these local messages. The King of the Hill three-point showdown, the Country Company's three-point showdown coming up. Brian Hatterberg, the Class A winner, Greg Moog out of Crystal Lake, the Double A winner, and they will face off coming up. 12-10, Rock Island leads this third place game. Lee Hall and Kenny McReynolds from the Assembly Hall in Champaign. Both these teams will take home a trophy and finish off excellent years. Nice trophies, uh, medallions, medals. And also I saw over there basketball. I guess everyone will autograph the basketball and it, it will go into the uh, trophy case at each school. As we look at the first quarter stats, Joliet shooting 27%, Rock Island 39, no three-pointers yet. Points in the paint, of course, Joliet with the advantage. Now maybe a, a little of the fatigue showing up there in the shooting percentage. And there's, you know, we talk about the disappointment of not being in the 8 o'clock game as Oku Satcher gets the block. He will be fighting off a lot of blocks this fall. He will play linebacker here for the Fighting Illini. He looks like a linebacker. Look at the arms. Very physical Joliet, Joliet team. Now watch Oku Satcher come over right there. Man, look at the arms on that guy. You know, Gary Bell was an outstanding football player, but after his sophomore year, he gave it up to concentrate on basketball. But he would have been All-State in football as well as basketball. Wilson makes both free throws. Now into the ball game, Corey Jenkins. And what I was going to say, finishing third or fourth is, uh, is, is an excellent year. And, oh, and, to, no and to think of how close both these teams came to being in that championship game. Each of them came within a basket. They had a shot, and they both had a shot at it, too. Joe Passion, let's have an update. Okay, this is the haircut update. <laughs> there you are. Correction on the last report, the cheerleaders now tell me that it wasn't Milton's mom, but yet his own teammate. Tim and Bessie, who were in the locker room, this, or rather in the hotel this afternoon, and this is straight from Milton's girlfriend, Emily, the cheerleader, and she should know, because she won't have any <laughs> fingers, or rather any hair to be rolling her fingers through. So that's the story behind the hair update. And Ken, I think you look marvelous. Hey, just the way you are. Ask her, does she, does she like the haircut? <laughs> Jeez. Andy Milton with the coconut hairdo, boy. I'm starting to. <laughs> she start, said no. She doesn't like it. No. She says she doesn't like it. Ask her if she liked the other one. <laughs> After she liked the one with the bangs. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. This is a current affair. There's Tamon VC, perhaps. A future in hairstyling, or perhaps not. She liked, she liked the other hairdo. Okay. And hopefully that brings an end to this hairy tail. I like the other one. He's wide open. There he is. Now nobody, nobody recognizes him. He's sneaking around now. Milton, this first two. Michael Mines with his first bucket of the evening. And 
need a haircut, but I don't think I'm going to go see Taman after the game. I think I may. 16-14, <laughs> Rock Island with a two-point lead. 5.50 to play, second quarter. Oh, nice Inside touch. Milton, and he gets bumped by Satcher. Nice touch pass by Jenkins back to Milton. And when you get bumped by Satcher, you're really bumped. <laughs> you know it. He missed all but 12 games with a broken ankle. OQ Satcher did. Nice touch pass right back to Milton. And when you put Milton up against an all-state linebacker in OQ Satcher, he's not going to win many of those um, going up one on one. Milton, a 54% free thrower. The 18-year-old senior bounces that one out. Michael Mines with it. And now the Steelmen will patiently work it around against the Rock Island zone. O'Connell penetrated. But had the ball knocked away. Lost it on the way up. Milton lost it. Now it's Rory O'Connell the other way. Michael Mines for three. He's their best three-point shooter. And he shows you why. And the Steelmen have their first lead of this game. Rocks try to work it inside, lose it again. Here's Joel House. Oh, what a block. Monte oh. Jenkins putting on a show, his second block of the game. Almost saved it out of bounds. What a block by Monte Jenkins. Monte with his second block of the evening. 4.24 to play, second quarter. One of your network sponsors is All Sport. Ultimate March Madness Championship game coming up at halftime of our championship game. 58 Chicago Marshall against 72 Thornridge, and we will speak to the coach, Joe Passion will, at halftime of this game. Ron Ferguson, now athletic director at Bradley University. A lot of people think that team was the best ever in Illinois State High School history. Quinn Buckner and our buddy Mike Fonzik on that one. We will see who wins coming up at halftime again of the championship game. Of course, we didn't have a chance to see the 58 Marshall team, but I hear that was a pretty good team. But we know that 72 team was outstanding and Joel House tried to save the ball, but he just couldn't do it. And the Rocks will get possession. They have a one-point lead. Rory O'Connell checks back in for Joliet. He replaces Michael Mines. I haven't seen any mascots for Rock Island, but I would love to see a rock as a mascot. <laughs> you know, dress somebody up like a rock. I would love to see that. Well, you know, pet rocks were all the craze in the, was that the 70s or the 80s. I don't know. Definitely not the 80s. I don't think it was a second. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't. Pete Michael. And it'll be John Ford whistled for the foul. Ford got there just a hair late to establish position. Called with the block. Joliet fouls. You know, there's a lot of people who don't remember the 70s for various and sundry reasons. I wasn't born. Keep Michael at the line, 17 points a game. And let's Keith check Michael in with Joe Passion. The hairy incident of haircuts, the story continues. No. This time from the Joliet bench. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you may notice a number of the Joliet players are without hair. There's a reason for that. Last night, Gary. Don't get scissors close to my hands, Bell. Shave the heads of any volunteers, starting out with Oku <laughs> Satcher and Eric Walton. And Eric Walton tells me that 
a lot of the players really like the look. Eric Brewer is one who refused to have his goatee cut, however, and I did take a consensus of the Joliet cheerleaders, and it's about three to one against. But they say they like it for the tournament, and they hope they'll grow them back. That's from the female end of it. Remember, this is the 90s. We take both sides of the coin on this telecast. Back to you two. Okay, Joe, and we'll be back with the Joe Passion Show in order, about a minute or two. <laughs> Dash and Joe Passion report on fashion. You know, it's I good, love the name. It's I, a good thing the uh, trainer wasn't around Gary Bell yesterday. I would hate to see what she would look like with Bell shaving her head off. Or her, her hair off. Or her, her head. Or her hair. That would really be nasty. Corey Jenkins. 22-17 rocks. Offensive foul. And a charge. See, House jumped up in the air, and he was in no man's land. But, you know, if he could just pull up and stop. See, if he stopped, like, right here, maybe pass that underneath, but he's in no man's land, out of control. He's going to get called for the offensive foul every time. No question about it. Heard of the Barber of Seville. That was the Barber of Joliet. We had a shot of Gary Bell over on the sideline. Corey Jenkins back in for Joliet. No, I'm sorry. It's Chip Bates for Joliet. My 44 is mixed up. They are guarding each other right now. 2.25 to go, second quarter. Rock Island, a five-point lead. Inside, Michael to the hoop. They'll give it to him, and he'll go to the line. One thing's for sure, Michael has come to play tonight. Count the basket by 30. Michael, charge that foul to number 11. Rory O'Connell, his first. Here it is again, his entry pass. Michael goes to the floor and he goes up with authority as he fouled by O'Connell. Pete Michael, All-State Honorable Mention on the Associated Press team. Misses the free throw and it remains 24-17. Joliet answers. Joliet basket by number five, Dwayne Edmond. Edmonds with his first basket. It's a five-point Rock Island lead as we approach the two-minute mark in the second quarter. Oh, nice fake, nice move. Monte Jenkins off the glass. He's fouled and he'll go to the line. Monte Jenkins named to the IBCA first team All-State yesterday. The basketball coaches picking the 6'5 senior from Rock Island. I don't think he's committed yet, has he, to a college? Not that I'm aware of. So I'm sure there are some college recruiters in the uh, crowd tonight that would just love to have Monte Jenkins attend their school. First team All-Stater. He has shown tonight and throughout this entire tournament that he is definitely a Division I basketball player. Rolls out the second one. He has five points. And it's a six-point Rock Island lead. Michael Mines for three. Oh. He's hit two from out there. Give him eight points. And the Steelmen back within three. But Monte answers. Three for three. Here we go again. Uh -oh. Mines now has 11. He's lighting it up. How about another three? How about an alley oop? Oh. Jenkins. Ten points for Jenkins. Oh, in and out. Follow though. Won't go for Bates. Good defense by the Steelmen. Under a minute now, second quarter. Good follow by Bates, and he's fouled underneath by Corey Jenkins. You have to give these guys credit. They are really playing hard. You're, I know. You cannot tell that this is not for a state championship. Oh, not my can goodness. You? These guys have come out here. They are really playing hard. John Ford, returns John Ford for back in. He replaces Oku Satcher. Tamon Vesey comes Tamon back in for the Rocks. Returns for Rock Island. 
Brad Wilson's back in there also. Chip Bates shoots two. Bates goes to the line, 55% free thrower. He had eight rebounds this afternoon against Manuel. And this is the first free throw. Yuri Emanuel, Harvey Thornton coming up next in the championship game. Bates misses them both. A couple of rookie coaches will square off in that one, and we are checking to see if it's not the first time that's happened in the state championship game. Two rookie coaches in the state championship. I tell you what, that has to be very unusual. Rocky Hill and Wayne McLean will square off about an hour or so. Joliet holding for the last shot. They'll get in it, oh, I would say right about now at 10. Michael Mines, good three-point shooter, hit two in a row. Goes in the lane instead. Ford with it, the left-hander hits it, beats the buzzer. And gets the Steelman within three as we go to halftime. Well, the steel men were down by as many as seven at one point. But they have fought back to within three at halftime. Well, let's go to Joe Passion. All right, with Coach Duncan Reed. Coach, uh, down by three. Team playing a little bit more to your expectations, or, we do, or excuse me, up by three. Team like to uh, change the scores. Well, not yet, Coach. I know they've had some close ones here. How would you like to see them particularly improve on the second half? Well, I think both teams are tired, and uh, that shows on the on the stakes of the dribbling and the ball handling. But our kids are playing; they're, they're playing all right. This will be should be a fun game, back and forth. All right, coach. Just hope to win it. Have a great second half, Duncan. Thank you very much, Duncan Reed, the Rock Island coach. The Rocks are in the locker room, up by three, and we will be back with more of our halftime festivities here from America's original March Madness in Assembly Hall, and we will be back after these messages from one of our network sponsors, the Dairy Farm Families of Illinois and Wisconsin. Rock Island in the locker room with a three-point lead here in our halftime of the consolation game of the Boys Class AA Basketball Finals Tournament. And we'll, of course, have the championship game later on. But first, we want to introduce you to the IBCA All-Staters, the All-Stars. And let's check in with our PA announcer, Steve Adams. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the Assembly Hall floor. It is the pleasure of the Illinois High School Association to present members of the 1995 Illinois Basketball Coaches Association Class AA Boys All-State Basketball Team. Representing the Illinois Basketball Coaches Association and presenting certificates to the All-Staters is IBCA President Duncan Reed, the basketball coach at Rock Island High School. Also assisting is the All-State Chairman Steve Simons, the basketball coach at Charleston High School. And here they are. First, a 6'5 senior forward from Joliet Township High School, Gary Bell. A six-foot senior guard from Peoria Manual, Willie Coleman. 6'4", senior forward from Harvey Thornton, Ty Streets. A 6'5", senior forward from Rock Island High School, Monte Jenkins. 6'5", junior forward from Peoria Richwoods, Mike Robinson. A 6'6", senior center from Pekin, Matt Moran. And a six-foot junior guard from Peoria Central, A.J. Guyton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, other members of the first team unable to be here. Tonight. And we will be back with more of our halftime festivities here from Assembly Hall. We're at the half of our consolation game, Rock Island up by three. And we'll be back after these local messages. 
We're back live at Assembly Hall, halftime of our consolation game. The Rock's up by three here at the break, and, and I am joined by a young lady who's been very active all this year. She's the 1995 Illinois Dairy Ambassador, Cheryl Greenwald, a native of West Chicago, is a senior here in food science at the University of Illinois. And I guess you've had a lot of fun walking around the state, and really bringing more of an awareness to people about how good dairy products are for you. How do you go about getting that message across? Well, actually, I have a couple friends here that you asked about, the Moose Brothers. Oh, that's right. We're going to bring the uh, Moose Brothers on here. Now, If it, we'll focus over here to our lab. These are the Moose Brothers. Now, today, they forgot their harmonicas, but they did bring their voice. And these are, tell us how the Moose Brothers bring this awareness out, Cheryl. Well, the Moose Brothers and I travel the state of Illinois, visiting with children and families, reminding them that dairy products not only are good for you, but taste great, too. And we have a lot of fun with them here. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, you're already turning the crowd on here and here as I can watch them around the assembly hall. Tell me a little bit about the dairy products. There are some new ones coming out in the market that are available in the stores. What are those? Well, there's a variety of dairy products for everybody's taste and personal preference. Some of the newer products out there are flavored milks. They've got banana milk and strawberry milk. And there's some new yogurt snacks for children out there as well. You know, it seems like every day you pick up a newspaper, Cheryl, and something else is cancerous, something else isn't as good for you as everyone has said it always was. Dairy products seem to always overcome that, don't they? That's right. Uh, dairy products are the best source of calcium as well as a complete source of protein and other vitamins and minerals. And you should at least get two to three servings dairy products a day. And what is your favorite dairy product? Oh, my favorite dairy product is ice cream by far. Uh, I love shakes and the American Dairy Association of Illinois has lots of great recipes for shakes and other dairy products. And we can get those recipes. You can write the American Dairy Association of Illinois okay. at their address, 1 West El Paso, or 1 West Front Street in El Paso, Illinois. The zip is 61738. Or you can call their number, which is area code 309-527-4095. Okay, and that's the uh, number that's on our screen quickly your flavor uh, favorite flavor strawberry okay <laughs> guys thanks very much and uh make sure you park it outside all right we've been seeing them all night long cheryl thank you very much thank you. cheryl greenwald our 1995 dairy ambassador of illinois and her buddies the moose brothers now earlier today we had a chance to talk more about the ultimate march madness with a former thornridge coach ron ferguson the great hall of famer and also with jerry schnee former reporter of the chicago tribune sports section to talk about the great teams of yesteryear if we were to preview this great game, Marshall against Thornridge, I guess best to bring in two people that would know those teams very well. First off, the coach from those Thornridge teams, Coach Ron Ferguson, and someone that covered those teams back in his sports writing days with the Chicago Tribune, Jerry Schnee, still writing for the Tribune. But still, I know you're not that old. We're not going to keep. I didn't mean, quite cover uh, uh, Marshall in '58 and '60, but uh, I think it's, it's going to be a great game because uh, Marshall had George Wilson, M.C. Thompson, who are, would be matched up against uh, uh, Boyd Bats and, and and Quinn Buckner, and that would be, a, a, I would think, two uh, one-on-ones for the ages in the, in the state of Illinois, and both have. Uh, Great supporting cast, and both won two state championships. Uh, Marshall did it in 58, lost in the super sectionals in 60, at 59, and won again in 1960. And of course, everyone knows what Thornridge would and Ron Ferguson's coach did. Well, Ron, you had great athletes, but uh, Marshall, 20 years maybe ahead of its time. No, no question about it, Joe. And I think the, our problem with Marshall is going to be is their size advantage they have on us. And uh, we're going to have to get some mileage out of the press uh, or we're going to have a difficult uh, time coping with Marshall. But uh, I think our quickness uh, and our press and our defense has got to pay off or, or else we're going to have a lot of trouble. Now, would the advanced coaching techniques of your time maybe help in that press and the defense against such a talented team like Wilson's Marshall team? I don't know. I thought Marshall in their day was as good as any team, any place like that. I, I don't think, I think Coach Solario was as good a coach, and I think he was ahead of his time also. So I don't think that that's going to be, I think it's just going to be a great basketball game, and whoever uh, makes the least number of mistakes and, uh, and whoever shoots the best is going to win the game. Okay, Ron, thank you very much. Good to see you again. Looking so great. And Jerry, you always look great. Thank, oh, thank you, you for both much. of us for being here. We will be back with more right after these local messages from Assembly Hall. Half. So, Mike, real quickly, how do you catch up? Uh, Going to cut down our turnovers big time. Uh, take care of the ball, make some of those layups, keep them off the boards, and just play hard basketball. All right, go get him, Coach. Mike O'Connell's team trails by three. Back now over to center court to Kenny McReynolds and Lee Hall. 
All right, Joe, thank you. 30 to 27, we'll be back at the Assembly Hall in just a minute. While politicians try to reform... And welcome back to the Assembly Hall. Michael Mines just hit a three for Juliet to tie the game. And Michael answers for Rock Island. He has 10. Michael Mines, Michael Mines is heating it up. With the three. That's five of them. And that ties Ivan Watson. I oh, a little pushy. Oh, a little push underneath by. Bates. Chip Bates. Chip Bates was a foul. foul his first. Chip Bates, that's his second. Check that's that. His second. No shot. Ooh. Gary Bell's going to Notre Dame, but I thought he was going to play basketball. He might Julia make a pretty good linebacker Gary himself. Bell, well, remember, he was an All-American linebacker Juliet. before he uh, gave up uh, football to concentrate on basketball. That's four fouls on Gary Bell. And when you run into Gary Bell, you have run into a low. Joe House and Gary Bell are out. Out of bounds, Rock Island. Frustration showing on Gary Bell's face. Two points, four fouls in this third place game. Pete Michael, 14 points. And Rock Island back to a one point lead. A minute 30 to play, third quarter. Michael Mines with it, he has 20 points. And here comes Michael. Oh, couldn't quite get up. Michael. Not enough left in those legs, maybe. It's been a long day, it's been a long couple of days for these teams. Nice steal, but Ruth ran into his own man. Foul goes against Dwayne Edmonds of Joliet. Number five, Dwayne Edmonds. That's his first. That's four. Great steal by steal by Woods, but he ran into his own man. Then he was fouled. Six nothing run by the Rocks has given them the lead with a minute to play in the third quarter. Oku Satcher whistle for the foul. That's his third. He is going to be a linebacker for Illinois this fall. Inside, Corey Jenkins the miss, followed it, couldn't get it to go. Joliet has the ball for the final seconds of the third quarter. Side. Satcher off the glass, won't go, but he's fouled by Corey Jenkins. Satcher, when he gets down low, is so big and strong. I'm surprised they don't run more plays with him down low on the block. Because if he spreads out, you can't get around him. Then he will get the ball down low, and he's so strong, make a strong move. He should be able to clear the way right to the basket. 6'3", 225 senior. You know he'll just get bigger as he plays football. Yeah, you bet. He can carry on that great tradition of line eye linebackers. And he wants to uh, walk on the uh, football basketball team. Michael, Joel House back in for Joliet. He replaces Chip Bates. Well, he looks like a linebacker. He really does. Unfortunately, he shoots free throws like a linebacker. Well, a lot of football players are so strong, they don't have that soft touch. Yeah. Although, of course, in the next game, we'll see Ty Street, who 
does have a nice soft touch for a football player. He's got good hands. He's a wide receiver. Tamon VC will pull it back out with time running out here in the third quarter. Oh, look at Woods wide open underneath the basket. Ford with it, but they won't get a shot off. So it's a three point Rock Island lead after three. Eight minutes to play in this third place game. We will return to the Assembly Hall after these local messages. The Chicago Stop. Back to the assembly hall. Fourth quarter action underway. Rock Island leads Joliet 46 43, 48 43. Monte Jenkins, he now has 18. He's come to play tonight. Nice lob, slam dunk. Average is 17 a game. Now the Rocks steal it away. LT Boyd will bring it back out. Five-point Rock Island lead. They led by seven in the first half. Elston, no good. Hit the first two buckets of the game, but misses that time. And it's Joliet ball with 7.08 to play in the fourth quarter. And Gary Bell is so coming back. Gary Bell is back in the lineup. In the last quarter Island of his career. Coach Reed sporting the Snoopy tie tonight. I love the expression on his face at halftime. <laughs> when Joe told him they were down, they were down by three. By three. <laughs> but he meant he was up by three. He looked like he changed the score. Joel House, no good. And the foul on O'Connell. Yeah, he wasn't going to let old Joe get away with anything, was he? <laughs> Not that time. <laughs> you think he didn't care about the third place game? Huh? <laughs> this kid, these guys are playing hard. These kids have really come out and played hard. Duncan Reed making his sixth trip to the Elite Eight. Has two fourth place finishes to show for it. Offensive foul. And a charge that time. O'Connell got the call that time around, but he paid for it, hitting the floor hard. Control foul, 34. And Joliet here's what happened first. earlier today. Joliet down two against Peoria. Manuel Michael Mines with a shot to win. It didn't go. And the defending state champs move on to the championship game. In game two, it was Josh Elston for Rock Island. In and out and in. And that shot broke hearts all across the Quad Cities. Rock Island trying to make their first championship game. They didn't. And that's, that's not a look at tonight's championship game. It will be Thornton and Peoria Manual. It should be a dandy. Dan Rohn and Kenny will have that one coming up for you next. And I'll be sitting right behind you watching every minute of it. Brandon Hughes, the star of last year's championship game, was just here. Talking to him in between one of the race. There's a look at it. There you go. Brandon Hughes hit the free throws that won it last year for Manuel. He says he'd like to be out there again tonight. I bet he would. I remember last year when he ripped his shirt off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do a lot of people. Brandon, gave us the Rock Superman Island. pose. He replaces Corey. He's playing junior college ball, and you can bet, you can bet there are a lot of Division I coaches looking at him. You better believe it. Outstanding player. I think he's potentially an NBA player. Do you? Yeah. He has NBA potential. Michael has 18, and now it's a seven-point lead for the Rocks. That matches their biggest of the game. 
Look at Monte Jenkins. Get, oh, he got called for a foul. Oh. Oh, yeah, oh, man, I guess. I thought you had it too, Monte. Do you disagree, Mr. Lee? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. I wasn't down there. Bell goes up. Oh. <laughs> well, what do you think he thinks? Well, when you wear number 23, you usually get a break or two. <laughs> he has three blocks on the game. And Bell rolls in the free throw. Mike O'Connell said it. Gary Bell has taken our program to another level. Here's what they've done with Bell in the lineup, a four-year starter, 102 wins, four conference titles, four regional titles, two sectionals, two super sectionals, and a trophy tonight. Not bad. Not bad. And I'm sure John McLeod is hoping that he does the same thing for the <laughs> Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. My Irish could use a lift, couldn't they? I think Gary Bell will be a good shot for the arm once, you know, now that Notre Dame is going to play in the Big East. Their freshman class, freshman recruiting class, I believe, was ranked tops in the country. Really? Yeah. I think I read that it was one of the best in the country, if not the top. Read that in the paper today. And that's, that's one reason Gary Bell wanted to go there, I think, was to be part of the rebuilding, part of the... And he committed last year. So he, he, went, he really wanted to go. He went to a Notre Dame football game, said he fell in love immediately. That's a, of course, that's a great recruiting tool. Yeah, not many people don't go to Notre Dame football games and fall in love. Did you go to Notre Dame? I did not. I went to Peoria Spalding High School, though, and... You know, we were Irish, and uh, so that kind of just carried over. You know, I had a chance to go, and I did show how smart I was. <laughs> Good friend of mine went to school there as Joel House gets it wide open underneath and scores. Your Emmanuel will play in the next game. Jameer Jackson, who was an All-Stater for the Rams, went played for Digger Phelps at Notre Dame, got himself a degree. 51-47 our score. Elston no good. Here they come. Joel House. Here come the Steelmen. Now what I think they need to do is maybe put a little pressure on the basketball and try to double team and get some traps. They're only down by two. Five minutes to play in regulation. Rock Island led by seven. It's now down to two. Joey has picked up the pressure a little bit here. Monte Jenkins got away with an elbow and now a foul called against House. He gets the official little pat thing to call as the Steelman tries to double team the basketball and come up with the steal. 23, Monte Jenkins at the line. Uh, here comes the Steelman. Boy, they really gonna hit you quickly. They like to run and gun, get down the floor. Nice rebound, outlet pass, and House with the layup. House now with four personal fouls and 14 points. Monte Jenkins at the line. You know, not only has House improved his basketball game since he uh, found out he needed glasses, I also understand he's become a much better student also once they found out he needed glasses. Official. He gives the Rocks a four-point lead. One of your network sponsors is Ford. Your Ford. And welcome back to the Assembly Hall. Our third place game, Lee Hall, Kenny McReynolds. 4.52 to play in the fourth, Rock Island. A four-point lead. Here comes Joliet. They picked up the pace here in the fourth. Oh, what a rebound. And the travel on Michael Mines. Boy, what Turns a it over. What a rebound by Chip Bates, but he couldn't control the basketball then Mines with the travel. 440 left. 
Monte Jenkins having a great ball game. He has 20. And now the foul will go against Dwayne Edmonds. Let's go to Joe Passion. Well, guys, we've talked about the O'Connell retirement that is going to be taking place following this game and talking with his wife, Tina. And there you get a good look at Tina sitting up in the upper area with all the relatives, the, all the O'Connell families out there. They survived St. Patty's Day and this weekend. That says a lot about them. And because Rory, of course, a senior, he's going to be stepping down from his high school basketball playing. But one thing about Mike, he goes back to work again. He remains dean of students at Joliet Township High School. He will not continue coaching, but Tina does admit one thing they will finally get a chance to do is spend Christmas together with, as a family, something they really haven't been able to do in over 14 years because of all the years that Mike has coached. And he's really looking forward to being able to spend more time with his family. Rory will go on to play college, and his daughter also plays at South Carolina. So they hope to do some traveling to watch their other kids playing instead of coaching them. That's great, Joe. There's nothing like spending some time with your family. What a great job Mike O'Connell has done with the Steelman of Joliet. Outstanding. Is it Joliet East for two years, at Joliet West for 10 years, and now the head coach of Joliet Township the last couple of years as we have a whistle inside. Rock Island now a 55-49 lead. For Rock Island 34, LT Boyd is back in the game. For Joliet number 11, Rory O'Connell returns. Mike O'Connell 59 and four in two years at Joliet Township. And Michael Mimes took a shot to the mouth. He's on the uh, bench. But look at his mouth. It looks like he's bleeding. That's why he had to come out. For the Rocks, number 33, Josh Elston replaces Andy Melton. The DeKalb Scholar Athlete brought to you by DeKalb Genetics and your local DeKalb dealer coming up. The end of this ball game. Michael misses the second one. He has 21 points now to lead the Rocks. And they have the ball now in a seven point lead. LT Boy, the jumper no good. Elston, the rebound. Whoa, little Tough contact, call there. Huh? And Josh Elston, who was fouled there, is our DeKalb Scholar athlete. A 3.28 grade point average. Four years of varsity basketball, four years varsity baseball. He's a dare role model. Tutors adolescent children. And will major in business. replaces Joel House for the Steelman. Josh Elston shoots free throw. As Joel House fouls out, Gary Bell is out. It's timeout, Rock Island. We are out. Rock Island takes a timeout. 3-11, but we're going to stay here. 3-11 to go fourth quarter. Rock Island, a 56-49 lead, trying to finish best ever under Duncan Reed. He's got four, make that two fourth place finishes to show for four trips down here with Rock Island. Well, third place finish is outstanding, I think, in the state of Illinois. Oh. You know, if you get down to Champaign, you've done a great job. If you get to the Sweet 16, I yeah. think, too. Sweet 16, especially though you get down to the Elite Eight. Definitely. Duncan Reed, six trips to the Sweet, make that five trips to the Sweet 16. The Elite Eight, he went to the Elite Eight in 1973 as head coach of Lincoln. Lost to Lockport, made it here with Rock Island in 84 and lost to Simeon. Made it here in 88, lost to St. Francis de Sales in overtime in the semifinals and then lost to Manuel. 
to finish fourth. 89, they finished fourth, got knocked out by Peoria Central. In the semifinals. Made it here in 91, lost to Manuel. And this is his fifth trip here. So fourth place, the best he's done. And let's pause now for station identification on the IHSA network. He replaces John Ford. Elston's free throw is good. And Gary Bell is back in. That was a real quick rest. Steelman now down by nine. They cut it to two. And it's a 7 0 run for the Rocks with three minutes to go in this third place game. Peoria Manuel. And Harvey Thornton coming up next for the championship. Gary Bell with just his second field goal of the night. Well, he's not done with his high school career yet. What do you play Bell in college? At a three? He's only 6'5", yeah, but he... you have to, don't you? Just... Yeah, I think so. Mountain Dew player of the game, Monte Jenkins with... 20 points, three three-pointers, and how many blocks does he have? He had three blocks at last check. Michael is at the line for three block shots. Three block shots, seven of nine from the field, three of four from beyond the arc. Michael's having a nice game as well. He has 22 to lead the Rocks in scoring. Michael with 23. Corey Jenkins checks in for Josh Elston. 2.39 to go. Championship game coming up next. Looking for Bell down low. He gets it. He's fouled by Michael. Well, all Rock Island has to do now, Lee, is just play smart basketball. They'll take home that third place trophy. Gary Bell through the line for Joliet. Two shots. And that'll be nice for Duncan Reed. As we mentioned, that'll be his best finish in Champaign. Five tries down here. I imagine that trophy case at Rock Island is getting a little bit crowded. With all the hardware from down here in Champaign. Gary Bell at the line. Missed, but Juliet comes up with it. Michael Mines up. No good, but he's fouled. And if that's against Michael, that's his fifth. That's six offensive rebounds for Michael Mines. Foul was on Jenkins. Second. Michael Mines is listed at 5'11 in the program. This is Michael and he Mines. has six offensive rebounds. Two shots. He needs to step back about four or five feet to get behind <laughs> that white line. Well, that's allowed. There was a kid that played for Tulsa University a few years ago that did that. He stepped back. He was at the back. He had his feet almost on the three-point line. He stepped back so far. Didn't Wilt Chamberlain do that also? I don't remember Wilt Chamberlain. I don't think he was that far back, but he wasn't at the strike. I've, I've seen some old films. <laughs> yeah. 60 to 52. Rock Island the lead, 210 to play. The battle for I-80. Tamon VC off the glass won't go, but he'll go to the line. Only had Got all kinds of fun coming your way tonight. 
There's five fouls on Chip Bates. Chip Bates fouls out with two points. With this being Mike O'Connell's last game, I wonder if this player would give him the old Gatorade shower. Or the you mean the all sport, sport shower, shower, don't you, sir? Thank yes, you. I do. The old all sport shower. You know, I bet they're not thinking about this being the coach's last game. Maybe we should send Joe to the bench to tell the guys at the end of the bench that they should dump the uh, all sport. Or maybe they could just give him a quick haircut. <laughs> oh, that would be a great way to go out. Where's the Clippers? VC hits the second one, and it's a nine-point Rock Island lead. Two minutes to play, fourth quarter of this third-place game. Peoria Manuel taking on a team from my father's old stomping grounds, Harvey Thornton. Well, I tell you what, Lee, you can't say enough about how hard each team has come out and played in this Constellation Championship game after each team came within a bucket of being in the championship game. Each team has come out and really played hard. They came, they came so close. To quote Maxwell Smart, missed it by that much. Here's our American Dairy Play of the Game brought to you by the Dairy Farm families of Wisconsin and Illinois. Milk, help yourself. And that's what Monte Jenkins does here. Help himself to a nice slam dunk. Yes, he did. He's our player of the game as well. 20 points for the Rocks. A minute 47 to play. And we're going to keep it right here. Take a look at the Rocks huddle. They look like they will go home with the third place trophy. Great game coming up between Thornton and Peoria Manuel. How about the job Harvey Thornton and Rocky Hill have done down here knocking off <laughs> knocking off Farragut last night. You know, he winning did, this afternoon. You know, and after today's game, I was in the locker room and he said he picked up a lot of his man-to-man -man pressure defense from UIC head basketball coach Bob Hallberg. And let's go to Joe Passion. Well, we have seen some very interesting things happen over the last three weeks during the girls, the boys, Class 8 tournament, and the Double 8 tournament. One of them, however, happened to our cameraman, Ron Burek, and his wife, Jane, in Oak Park on March 12th. Six pound, 11 ounce, Anton Maxwell. Yes, Dad was working, and there's Dad still working. And remember, this is the same cameraman who took one yeah. in the lower midsection yes. in the Class A tournament, but live to high pitch about it. <laughs> back to center court to Kenny and Lee. You know, I was in my living room back home in Peoria watching that last week. I bet he sang soprano for a week. <laughs> Well, congratulations and a to fine them. Baby boy. Fine looking young man. 63 52 now. <laughs> Gary Bell. Gary Bell showing you his <laughs> athletic <laughs> ability <laughs> there. Air ball. On the way over here tonight, I ran into a lady who is from Peoria. As the Steelman missed that shot. From Peoria, her nephew plays for Thornton. I said, who are you going to root for? She said she hadn't made up her mind yet. So I guess she'll wait until the uh, game is decided. <laughs> yeah. For Rock Island. Foul on Michael Mines will send Taman VC to the line. Taman VC is at the line for the Rocks one and bonus. Should be a good one coming up. Ford was into the lane too early, but it didn't matter. VC hits. Well, now I'm sure we'll probably get a couple of substitutions. You want to give everybody a chance to play on the assembly hall floor. Michael Mines, a great ball game, checks out with 21 points. Yes. Into the, far his best game. 
excuse me. Paul Purcell into the ball game now for Joliet. Want to try and mention all the guys who come in and uh, give them a little pub back home in Joliet, Rock Island. Andy Milton in for Pete Michael. And he gets Junior a, will be back. He gets a big hand. 23 points for him. Here's Purcell. Paul Purcell with the jumper right off the bench. And we are under a minute now in this third place game. It's the slam dunk championship coming up. King of the Hill in the three point shooting. Monte Jenkins. Boy, he won't quit, will he? Monte Jenkins. He will not quit. Now this is his last Juliet high school game. Called a timeout Juliet just to get some subs in. I'm not sure they'll take the whole timeout. Hey, look at Duncan, Duncan Reed. Reed giving a hand to the folks who have driven over from the Quad Cities, and they've got a good crowd up there, all dressed in red. Let's write that down. Duncan Reed smiles. Ah, she's smiling. Yeah, she's had an up and down day, hasn't she? Mrs. Reed in tears this afternoon. A heartbreaking loss for Rock Island, but she can be proud of her husband and his boys today. His lads will finish third in the state. And that's something to be proud of, definitely. Five times to the Sweet 16 for Duncan Reed. Five times to the Elite Eight. This will be the first time that he will leave here with a win, though. He'll go out with a win. This time around, two fourth place finishes. One in 88, one in 89. You'll see the award ceremony for this game for third and fourth place between Joliet and Rock Island. 30 seconds to go. Monte Jenkins gets a nice hand as he comes out. I look at the guy that's standing up on the bench so they can get a hand. Michael Mines just set the record for three-pointers in a game with seven. 24 points for Michael Mines and now into the ball game. One of the guys who went under the buzzsaw. The first time for Joliet. Eric Brewer, number 52. Kevin Robb, number 50, in for the Steel Men. Michael Mines checks out for the last time. The senior, 24 points, and he just set the Elite Eight record with seven three pointers in a game. Look at that great effort by LT Boyd. Look at that rebound by Jenkins. Feel the excitement in the air. It's beginning to build for our championship game coming up next. Peoria Emanuel, Harvey Thornton. It should be a great game before what will be a great crowd here in Champaign. Peoria Emanuel ranks second in the state. And they'll try to defend their state title. Into the ball game now for Rock Island, number 22, Mike King. Also in there, Larry Stevens, number 30, a 5'10 sophomore. Marlon White, number 11, 5'10 junior, getting a little PT here in the third place game. Number 31, Matt Quinones comes in. He's also in for the Rocks. And Eric Walton, number 30 for Joliet Township, puts up the last shot of the game. It didn't go. And Duncan Reed gets his third place trophy. 69-59 the final. And we send along our congratulations to both Mike O'Connell, his Joliet Township team, and Duncan Reed and the Rock Island Rocks. They can both be proud of their ball teams really playing hard and giving it their all here in this third place oh, game. Each team, to me, was just absolutely outstanding. They came out, they had to be tired. Each team played to within one bucket of going to the championship. They had tough games, and they both came out and played extremely well, extremely hard. Gary Bell disappointed. 
in his final game as a senior at Joliet Township. He will move on to Notre Dame, disappointed in the loss, but he can be proud of what his team accomplished this year. And the star for Rock Island tonight, Monte Jenkins, is with Joe Pash. Monte had a huge game tonight, 22 points. And tell us a little bit about coming back off that emotional loss in the semifinal to get back up and stage a great game here today in the consolation. Well, um, since we would, since we didn't win the game, um, coach told us to come out here and play this game with uh, our hearts, and that's what we did. We won this for the coaches and uh, basically the team. And um, this is going down the record book back in Rock Island because this is the first time uh, Rockies won, gotten a third place trophy. That's right, and Coach has been down here before. He's had some great teams here, and yet you guys have come up with his biggest trophy of all. It's got to make you very proud. Tell me a little bit about how you guys were able to get Joliet off their shooting percentages. They really had troubles, and you guys gave it to them. Well, uh, we tried to, uh, the Gary Bell and uh, number 23, we tried to stick them pretty good, and uh, number 23, uh, he could shoot the three real good, and we had to, we sagged off of the rest of the people, and that's what gave us the little edge. Monte, congratulations to you and all your teammates, and Coach Reed for a great finish here today, this year. Thanks a lot. All right, Monte Jenkins, our player of the game, and we will be back to Assembly Hall with more coverage of America's original March Madness, and we will be back after this word from our network sponsor, Mountain Dew.